Hi everybody and welcome to the Electronic Harassment Parent Coalition of Palm Springs, California. My name is Kevin Bond, I'm the host for the show and I want to talk to you today about today's postings. Um, okay, first of all one thing that we always have to keep in mind or I always have to keep in mind when I make postings is the spin. Um, Lisa or the petitioner from the city of La Quinta tends to exaggerate. Um, basically she lies. And I just want to make sure that everybody knows that when you see the first one, which is the long fuse, it has nothing to do with me planning on bombing something, because I wouldn't do that. It has to do with the scheme that goes into electronic harassment in Palm Springs. And I, I hope that I can get this across to you guys. Um, this is a 20-year uh, plan and this is something that has been going on for a very very long time in Palm Springs and of course I wasn't here for all of it but I was implanted in Palm Springs and then was followed um, throughout my college career and then uh, into San Diego to my legal career with the courts and then there was a shooting and I came back to Palm Springs and of course we kind of have an idea how that all went. Um, of course, Jonathan Mendenhall was uh, there for most of it from the operator's side as one of my inside guys. So that's what I want to get to tonight. Um, but first, I also wanted to give a little shout out to uh, Michael Bell for his book, The Invisible Crime. Um, if you haven't seen it, uh, there is a post from yesterday which uh, kind of details um, and it gives you a link to a site where you can order the book um, but there's also tonight on the blog a radio interview with him and I haven't heard it all yet but I can guarantee you that the story that he's going to tell is going to be very similar to what you are going to hear um, and what you have been hearing from the Electronic Harassment Pair Coalition of Palm Springs from me. Um, yes. <laughs> It is an amazing feeling to know that I have um, other people that are telling these kinds of stories so that when I am speaking, people know that I'm coming from a place of education. I'm not just saying that I'm hearing voices. I'm not just saying that I'm being stalked. I'm not just saying that. This is something that somebody else um, has gone through. And there are a lot of things like that online now. Um, one thing that I want to make sure that you guys all know is, and this is something that I'm not very proud of, but I am going to tell you the truth. Um, when I worked for the federal court, I was what was called an intake clerk, and I filed a lot of complaints by a lot of people that came in and said they were hearing voices. Uh, I remember a couple of people saying that they had a tooth implant and they were hearing voices. A couple other people, a lady came in all the time that was filing complaints about it. And I just want you to know that I didn't believe them. I flat out did not believe them. I thought they were crazy. I thought um, there must be something going on with them. Maybe they were on drugs. Maybe they had mental issues. I remember commenting to the other clerks that I worked with that I didn't believe them. Um, and this is my apology to everybody because um, even at that time, I was still being gang stalked, but I wasn't hearing anything. So I had no idea why this was happening, but I didn't equate the two. And then I moved to Palm Springs and I started hearing these voices. And I can honestly tell you, as a person that would never have believed this before, when it happens to you, God forbid, you know that it's real and you know what other people are going to think. And I am one of those people that did not believe it. Um, I believe it now. Um, I certainly would not be saying the things that I say and working this hard to help people if I didn't believe it was true. And, you know, it's a really tough thing. There's a lot of shame that goes along with this crime in knowing that people aren't going to believe you. And so a book like Michael Bell's that comes out that is echoing the same sentiments as Dr. John Hall's book, um, A New Breed Satellite Terrorism in America. Um, John is a very good friend of mine. I just want to say 
that these sorts of things are very supportive and there's getting to be uh, there's a, like six seven eight books out right now that are talking about the same thing but Palm Springs we're unique and I want to explain that just a little bit now when you see today's postings like I said it's a metaphor it is not a platform from which um, Lisa or Lori can go and say well look he's talking about dynamite and bombs and everything it's a metaphor okay it's just like the head chopping off thing the reason I did that and I'm gonna go back on this is I said on the former blog hey Lisa that Lori's or Lisa's head was on the chopping block okay that is a business idiom and anybody that's heard it knows that it's a business idiom certainly I'm not going around chopping off people's heads it means that I'm going to be fired and you will see later in transcripts that we have with conversations that and I still hear it all the time that the police don't want to work with me anymore which to me meant she was being fired so the the idiom the business idiom the metaphor was her head was on the chopping block and she took that to look like something violent and then she turned it into workplace violence and then she turned it into something else and the fact of the matter remains is that I am not a violent person. I certainly am not going around chopping off anybody's heads. And if you look at my background, there's not a single violent incident in it. I'm not like that. So tonight, as I post the scheme that this 20-year program has um, developed, I want everybody to understand that when I say that someone is lighting a long fuse before the dynamite explodes, there's a reason. And the reason is this. Okay, is it so tough to believe that somebody that would go around and implant people without them knowing it would also go so far as to intentionally infect them with a disease? It's, you know, a toss up to believe that one is worse than the other because I can tell you from firsthand experience, neither one is good. Um, the invasion into your privacy, the um, taking away of your finances, you, the destruction of your reputation, all of that is a terrible thing. Um, the, the taking away of your opportunities for employment, uh, all of that that comes along with being RFID chipped and being followed like this and you know subsequently the arrest from the police department under false circumstances or a report that was given by somebody um, th that wasn't true especially in my case um, or Christopher's uh, I, I want everybody to understand that that kind of an invasion of your privacy and taking away of your ability to be a credible person. I mean, if you see my mug shots, you're going to think that I am high as a kite. But what you don't see is in the mug shots, I haven't slept for days because this girl won't shut up. Um, certainly, the drug test that I agreed to take um, showed that I wasn't on anything. Every time I was arrested, I wasn't on anything. But if you saw my mug shots, oh my gosh, you would think that I was. And it's that's part of this crime. Is it? I mean, when I've really been harassed, excuse me, when I've really been harassed for days and days at a time, I look like hell. And that's one of the reasons why you see me trying to do this right now. Is I want you to see me for who I am, a person. And um, let's talk about this long fuse thing. Okay. Across the country, this crime is generally, and the statistics show, being committed against women. Okay, mostly heterosexual women. Um, I believe 30 years old is the average age. And if these women were being implanted and sexually assaulted and infected with disease, it would raise eyebrows. Because a lot of these women are married or they're heterosexual. So if they start testing positive for diseases, it would prove that they were being sexually assaulted. But in Palm Springs, it's different. And that's unfortunate. Like I said, the crime is being committed mostly against gay men, but there are women too. And I want to be clear on this. Because the police department has heard from this woman for so long that we're so promiscuous and we all use drugs and none of us are having safe sex and we have rough sex and all this other stuff, they believe that that's the way we all are. Well, that's not the way we all are. And I want everybody to know that I was getting tested for my blood before I was sexually assaulted. So I knew that I was undetectable for HIV and I had nothing else because my doctor tests for everything. 
Then, as soon as I was sexually assaulted, my next blood test showed that I was testing positive for FC, syphilis, TB, um, and all kinds of stuff. And I knew I hadn't done anything. I knew that I had been sexually assaulted, and I took that report to the police. And I can show that before the rape, I didn't have any of this stuff. And after the rape, I did. But the police didn't do anything. Now, if that had happened to any of these female victims across the country, that would give them you know, the right kind of information and the police could go forward. But at our police department, that doesn't happen. Because there is a stereotype that we are involving ourselves in risky behavior that allows us to get these diseases so they don't do anything. Um, it's unfortunate that that's what happens, but that's what's going on. And I want to make sure that everybody understands, you know, a lot of these people that are hearing these voices now don't even know that they were sexually assaulted. Many of them don't. And it's not because they don't feel anything or anything like that. It's because they don't believe that it could have happened. Now, I know that I was. And I know that Stephen Fry, in his home, same home that I was in, was also being sexually assaulted. I've never had that conversation with him, but I know from what I saw with him that I would go over to his house the morning after it would happen and he would be shaking and staying in bed and wouldn't tell me what happened. I know one night I was so worried about him that I went over to his house, looked in the window and saw who I believe, allegedly, to be Brian Latweek in his bed while Stephen was knocked out. And as soon as I looked in the window, saw him, he sits up, but Stephen's knocked out. Could not see a thing. I didn't say anything to Stephen at the time because we weren't like intimate having, you know, a relationship. But, you know, it was his business. But Stephen didn't move. And I was assaulted in the same bed in the same home. So I never said anything to Stephen, but I did see that happen. And um, I just wanted to be clear. The reason that this is happening and the reason that there are so many electronic harassment targeted individuals in our area and they're gay men is because this crime goes unpunished. And it's because she lights a long fuse. And what happens is, is you, these people get knocked out, they get implanted with these chips. While they're knocked out, why not sexually assault them, I guess these people think. And then there is either a syringe that is put into their rectum or arm with tainted blood from whoever the perpetrator is and we think it's a female profile we've got that much information i think right now and we want to see and then they, they inject this blood into them and of course if they've had you know something um, put into their bodies that causes a, a, a laceration or something these people end up positive for hiv hep c syphilis and TB. All of these can be genotyped to go back to what we believe is a female profile. Okay, so these are gay men that are getting positive, are testing positive because a woman has infected them. But the problem is this. The problem is this. When we report these things, we're not being taken seriously. And a lot of these people aren't reporting because they don't know. But when I reported it, First of all, Officer Few comes at me like he's an angry guy. And second of all, he doesn't even realize that his own friend, Sergeant Anderson, is the one that told me to report that. And you've got Lisa in his head telling him that I'm some bad guy and that he shouldn't believe me, so he doesn't. But the truth is, is, is this is what happens. And so in Palm Springs, these people aren't getting caught. So what happens is this encourages this kind of behavior. And so we have, you know, 300 plus victims probably in our area and they're all gay men and this is what's happening to them. So she lights a long fuse. This way she can scream and yell at these people for years before they die. And that's sad. Lots of people have died in the 20 years that this has been going on and nobody knows. You know how many people she watched die and to me it's up to me to stop that so I want everybody to know that I'm trying my best I always will if you get a chance get the book the invisible crime by Michael Bell the interview is on the blog tonight and understand that the long fuse is a fuse of disease and microchipping if the microchipping doesn't get you the disease will
I love you, Christopher. Have a good night. Bye.